Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Noor, I'm Chief Exec at GTN. Uh, we are building generative tensorial networks, and we hope that, we, that will enable us to make a quantum Julie, leap in drug discovery. The front. I would like to start by sharing with you our vision, how interdisciplinary innovation will allow us to accelerate the practice of science and help us solve some of the worst, most probably, unmet needs, finding drugs and curing diseases. I would like to introduce you to an emerging area of science, an area that has probably been there for a while now, but is very, very gr growing very, very rapidly. That's quantum machine learning. Now, neither quantum physics nor machine learning is new. The term machine learning has been there, has been there for about since 1950s, and it usually refers to the practice of training and, training and designing machine learning tools to augment and accelerate humans. This has been there for, since 1950, but it wasn't until recently, very recently, that some practice in that area started to produce interesting results. So we can see applications for this in autonomous vehicles, in speech tenses, and recently also in discovering of new drugs, as you have seen before, the amazing talks before. Quantum physics, on, on the other hand, this very elegant, very powerful tools and theory that help us understand the world of the very smalls of atoms and molecules to the world of the very large of, of the galaxies is probably has been there since, 19, since the 90s. Application of this, of, of quantum physics, help us understand the world of galaxies up to atoms. So I'd like us to ask ourselves this question. Will the combination of quantum physics with machine learning help us unlock the full potential of both? Will this combination help us better understand molecules and find cure to diseases? So that, that's basically where we started. That's how GTN started. We wanted to see how this combination will help us transform the way that we're doing drug discovery. So we believe GTN is uniquely positioned in the intersection between quantum physics, machine learning, and chemistry. And we hope that this unique position will help us unlock some of the, or solve some of the challenges in this area. So I'd like to, go, to take you through the journey of the area that we are tapping into, drug development. So whenever a bi biological target, usually a protein, is identified, you go through a very, very long journey to identify a small molecule in this case that binds to this protein. So the area starts by screening hundreds of thousands, usually hundreds of millions of libraries of chemicals available in screening libraries collected throughout the, the history of humanity. And you want to identify the few that are active against the target. So out of hundreds of millions of compounds, you end up with thousands that are usually effective against a disease or so, so, show some interaction with a disease. You filter the effective one out, but most of them are usually toxic, have unsoluble, or have usually of low efficacy. You filter them out and you try to optimize their structure to increase their properties or to improve their properties. You end up with hundreds that are good enough to be tested on animals. Eventually, you have a handful that are safe to go into human testing and probably one, if any, will go into clinical trial. Into, eventually, will end up as a drug. So this journey, as you have seen before, takes about 15 years. It costs $2.6 billion. So why, why is it the case? Why it takes that, that, that long and costs that amount of money? What's actually also very, very interesting is that the, um, the return of investment on R&D in, in, in pharmaceutical companies is, is expected to drop in half every nine years which basically means that there will be diseases that we can't cure anymore. Does anyone know what this is? This is actually the, the representation of penicillin. And the, the, the reason I put it there is because this is actually the way that we feed machine learning tools. This is the representation that we feed into machine learning tools to invent new drugs. And as you can see, there's a very, very little information incorporated in, 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 this, in this structure. Chemicals are like a very complex structure of atoms, electrons, the electronic cloud, entanglement, quantum mechanical properties. And without feeding machine learning tools with the right information, you can't really get them to, to, to perform properly. I come from a machine learning background, and I've been doing AI and machine learning for about 10 years in academia. And while I came to appreciate the power of this method, I also came to realize that without feeding them with the right information, with the right image of reality, you won't be able to get them to to effectively work. 
So representation is crucial. So people start realizing that the string representations are really good enough. So they moved into a graph representation of chemicals. And that, as you might see, comes from this ball and sticks models of, of chemicals that are kind of the golden standard in chemistry at the moment. So people started converting these models into graphs using specific types of deep learning models to feed those graphs into machine learning to invent new drugs. And this solves one part of the problem. The other problem is the size of a search space. So the, the number of chemicals that, that, are, that could potentially become drug is about 10 to the power of 60. If you think about how large this number is, it's actually almost as the number of atoms in the entire universe. So searching and discovering in this space is a very, very challenging task without having the right tools. So that's exactly what we're doing at UTN. We're trying to use ideas from physics in order to represent the wave functions of chemicals, taking into account quantum entanglement properties, and combine that with the recent state-of-the-art machine learning tools, deep learning tools, to be able to predict chemical activities more accurately, and more importantly, to sample new novel chemicals from this huge drug-like space. So the idea that we're taking from from deep learning, our generative adversarial network would have recently, very recently, achieved remarkable results in replicating images and text, basically producing realistic images of faces, bedrooms, uh, kitchens, that are very hard to differentiate between real images and images synthesized by, by the machines. So why not, not taking this analogy and feeding these powerful tools or custom version of them with a wave function representation, with the actual image representation of the chemicals and get them to predict and to sample new instances. So this is kind of the history of how, 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 of how things will come through. So four, probably seven years ago, we had a convolutional neural networks which are trained on images. Recently, they have achieved pretty much, pretty much near, near human accuracy in predicting what's in the image and in sampling new instances. In the chemistry field, for about a year ago, people started working on what's called a graph convolutional network, which are networks similar to convolutional network on, networks on images, but are trained on a graph representation of, of the compounds of the chemicals. What we are trying to do is to take this a step forward, and instead of feeding those with, with, with the graphs, we're feeding them with either more, more, more advanced graphs enriched with, with quantum mechanical properties. Eventually, we would like to feed in the whole wave function representation of the chemicals. So I would like to end with two examples. So GTN is now one year old, and I'd like to take you through two examples of the thing that we've been uh, tapping into or like working on for, for the past year. So this result is uh, for one project that we are currently running with one of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies. Unfortunately, I can't share the details because it's still under NDA. But the idea is that we, we basically want to predict what's called IC50, which is binding affinity or how well a, a chemical will bind to a protein. And that's very important for two main reasons. On one hand, you want your chemical or your, your eventually a drug. Uh, you want it to bind to a specific protein very well. On the other hand, you don't want that chemical to bind to a whole set of other proteins because otherwise it will kind of initiate a toxic reaction. So what we are trying to do in this uh, model is to build a single model that can predict this IC50 or binding affinity or a, a whole. Uh, along a whole range of proteins at the same time. So kind of like building one, one model for a whole range of protein for certain chemicals. And what this graph shows in short is that basically our models at the moment are pitting other standard machine learning tools that are publicly available. And our goal for the next few weeks is to prove that we are also outperforming the models that have been developed in pharma on, on, on pharmaceutical uh, real world data sets. The other problem that, the other kind of challenge that we're working on is, there, is along the lines of representation of chemicals and how can we model wave functions of chemicals. And for this purpose, we're trying to develop what's uh, ideas from physics called tensorial networks to represent chemical structures. And those are usually very uh, computationally heavy. So at the moment, we're running experiment to simulate wave, wave functions of chemicals up to 40 atoms. It's, uh, we're using libraries of 7,000 chemical, and that's taking us about 40 days on 12 computational units. Our hope for the next few months is to cut this number down into one day, 
by increasing the parallelization and developing our model, optimizing our models further so that we can run these this methods on scale. So this work is done by amazing minds on our team. I would like to thank them all. Uh, we have a great team of uh, 11 PhDs in physics, computational chemistry, uh, uh, machine learning, chemistry. So uh, they've been contributing to all the pieces and putting all the pieces together so that we have a complete platform. We're also joined by a great team of advisors, uh, world-leading uh, computational chemists uh, and physicists and chemists and business that helping us, guiding us through, through the way. Uh, we're collaborating with uh, some of the world-leading research and academic institute. We also have pharma and biotech collaborators that we cannot disclose at this phase. And we are VC funded and we are hiring for our head of engineering. So if you are interested in joining us, please come talk to me. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Noah.